Uh, my name is Harry Chiu. Uh, I work in the uh, corporate technology department in Verizon uh, in the systems integration and testing department. Uh, so today uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, the kind of you know, the security testing that we perform in Verizon, uh, some of the issues that we face, and then uh, I wanted to kind of make some proposals to the vendor community about how to help us uh, resolve those challenges. Uh, first, I want to just give a little bit of an overview of the organization. Uh, so, in Verizon, before we deploy any product into the wireline network, um, we perform quite a bit of testing. And the responsibility of the testing is with us in the systems integration and testing at the moment. So, the testing is pretty comprehensive. It, uh, it involves functionality, end-to-end, -end, as well as stress testing, testing and security testing. So today I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about the security testing. So I'm not going to walk through this process. Uh, this is the basic process that we fo uh, follow for the testing. But I want to uh, point out a couple of things. One is that uh, for us to perform any testing, we have got to have an internal client as a sponsor. Uh, so that typically is like the network planning organization or network operations or the network architecture folks. Uh, another one that I want to point out is that we have a lab entry process. So instead of just receiving a, a piece of equipment from the vendor, uh, before they come in, we send out a uh, lab entry criteria to the vendor community and say, in order for us to do this testing, you've got to meet these expectations. Um, so once the expectations are met, we perform testing and then we make uh, recommendations as far as to deploy the product or not. So the, the lab entry expectations uh, is, you know, we have a pretty lengthy list. Uh, some are very basic, like we don't really test beta products. We have asked the products have to be a G8. Uh, but the main thing I want to emphasize here is that we expect the vendors uh, have performed their own testing. So they would submit their test plans as well as their test results for us to review uh, before uh, we approve it for it, uh, entry into the lab for our own testing. So we perform quite a bit of testing in the security area. Um, and the, the, you know, we perform the testing based on the requirements that are provided to us uh, by our internal clients. Um, but whatever the product specific requirements are, we, there's a couple of things that are in common. You always do uh, vulnerability scans before any product goes into the network. Uh, generally, we do that using Nessus. Uh, but we also do uh, quite a bit of buzz and testing using Canonical. So the products we test uh, include basically all the uh, network equipment that goes into uh, the wireline network. They include the transport equipment, the routers, switches, as well as the equipment that they enable services like voice over IP equipment, uh, SPCs, media gateways, soft switches, etc. Uh, as well as the video uh, type of equipment. <coughs> One of the uh, largest, largest testing projects we ever had is for BIOS. Hopefully everybody has heard of BIOS because we spent a lot of money building up this network. <laughs> I think we've spent more than $20 billion. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's a highly uh, sophisticated network uh, that basically we build out fiber all the way to the customer's premises, uh, it's end-to-end -end fiber. Um, uh, it enables us to provide very high-speed internet access. At this point, I think the high-speed that we offer is about 150 meg uh, per second. Uh, it provides both of IP as well as VDM services. So as you can see from the diagram, even though it's high level, uh, there's a lot of equipment that's involved, from CPE to this is the passive optical uh, equipment such as the OMTs and OMTs uh, that basically serve the loop. Uh, as well as the routers, uh, they include Cisco Juniper routers for, uh, for the edge as well as the core. And then there's a, quite a bit of equipment for enabling voice over uh, IP service such as the soft switches, etc. Uh, video, actually, we have kind of two parallel networks for video. One is uh, for broadcast video, which is delivered over a quad channel uh, to the customer, uh, which is similar to like a cable TV network. And then we have uh, video on demand, which is uh, delivered over uh, 
the uh, IP network. So all those elements have to be tested. And in terms of fuzzing test, uh, we use defensives. Uh, so because of the number of products and protocols that are involved, <coughs> we use a lot of the test suites from Konami, such as the core internet uh, uh, suite, routing, etc. So we test from the basic routing like OSPF, uh, BGP, ISIS, to the application protocols such as ITSP or Radio or SIP or uh, OS of IP. Then there are certain protocols that are not supported by the test suites. Uh, then in that case, we use the traffic capture browser. Uh, for example, recently uh, we used it uh, for testing Cobra, which is, believe it or not, still around. <laughs> and then, uh, and also DCCP. So, as you can see, I mean, we have a very large and complicated network, and we have to do a lot of testing. So the challenge for us is, how can we handle such a large number of products and protocols and test it on time? Um, it's very time consuming and very expensive uh, process. And then when we do the testing, uh, oftentimes uh, what we find is that we still run, uh, we can still uncover quite a few critical errors uh, in the products. For example, even, even just fuzzing the SNMP interface. Uh, recently we fuzzed a piece of uh, video equipment where just uh, attacking the uh, management interface on SNMP uh, exhausted all the swap space on that device and actually crashed the device affecting not only the management of the device, but the services associated with it. Uh, similarly, for RTSP, we are pretty easily uh, costing out service on uh, video on demand services by attacking the RTSP protocol. So, so even though a lot of vendors are doing a lot of good work in this sort of testing, but many vendors do, still do not uh, actually do any fuzzing testing at this point. So uh, this chart just kind of shows the process uh, where, you know, where open times when we test a piece of equipment, we find, we find uh, troubles. We submit the troubles to the, the, ven the vendor. The vendor basically provides a fix to us and we retest. But open times that does not actually resolve the problem because the fix may or may not fix the problem. And not only that, we may find additional problems. So we may get stuck in this process of, you know, test and fix, retest. And uh, which is very time consuming and delays deployment of the product. Now, uh, and the one thing I want to point out is that uh, we have you know, multiple groups in, in our organization for testing. And, uh, and one group may be testing the functionality, and another group may be testing the software, and another group may be testing uh, security, and we tend to share the same test bed. So it's not like you know, when we receive a fix from the vendor, we can test it right away because it scares you access to it. So all this has to the delay in product deployment process. So, so I think this is a difficult situation to resolve. Uh, we cannot really continue to do this sort of uh, test and retest and de uh, delay in deployment. So hopefully the vendor community can help us resolve that, the problem. And, and I think uh, the vendors need to incorporate the security into the product development process and also they have to do extensive testing of their products uh, before deployment, uh, before delivery to Verizon and other uh, uh, service providers. Uh, remember earlier I was talking about the lab entry process. We expect that the vendors will do the testing and, and provide the results of testing to us for review as part of the lab entry uh, so that we don't run into those problems of testing and retesting in our lab. Um, so at this point, Verizon is updating the, the security requirements in order to kind of encourage the vendors to move in that direction. Um, and, and at the same time, there's some industry development where third-party uh, testing services are, are becoming available, such as Tecpoli has recently announced that they're going to be doing this sort of testing. So hopefully, uh, for vendors uh, that don't have the tools or, or uh, expertise, expertise for the testing, they could go use their vendor testing service as well. So the benefit of this approach is that, you know, the vendor can uh, deliver a product uh, with robust security. Uh, they don't have to, they, they will minimize the amount of rework uh, that's necessary. And uh, for Verizon and other service uh, providers, uh, I think uh, they would reduce the amount of time that we 
it takes for us to deploy products and also minimizes the potential that we have to perform. So I think it's a win-win really situation for both the vendor community and the service providers. So that's the end of my talk. Do I have time for a couple of questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.